Give me a head with hair, long, beautiful hair, shining, gleaming. My name is John Cowsell, and I've been a Vader artist for since 2000. I started getting calls from the Beach Boy guys to sub for their drummer, sub for their drummer for a week, uh, sub for the, one of their guitar players for two weeks, um, and then they, I was going to sub for the guitar player again, so I learned all the guitar parts, and they called me up like a week before I was going out, and I mean, dude, I cashed out my thing. I had no money, so I paid my rent, because I don't play guitar well. I'm a drummer first, piano player, guitar player, bass player, but um, they asked me to play guitar, and I said, okay, sure, no problem. I can play anything. And so uh, I paid my rent with a credit card for the whole month. I didn't go to work. I just played the guitar every day, learned freaking songs. And uh, a week before we go out, um, they say, you ready to go? I said, yeah, as long as I don't have to play leads, because there was another guitar player who plays the leads, and he was going to play them all. I said, OK. He says, I, I said, as long as the other guy plays lead guitar, and he says, guitar? I said, yeah. He says, did anybody call you? You're going to be playing piano. So I said, really? I said, OK. I said, when was somebody going to tell me? Well, you do play piano. I know you do. That's your second instrument. I said, yeah. So I hung up the phone. I don't know any Beach Boy songs on piano, you know, so I have to learn them. And, and, and a lot of this stuff didn't even have piano on it. So. I get a, a CD from the band, and I'm trying to learn it on off the CD. So finally, I called their old piano player, who's my very good friend Billy Hinchy, who played with him, it's Carl's brother-in-law, and uh, he came and met me and gave me charts to learn the stuff. So I was good to go. So I was the Beach Boys piano player for seven years after that. Um, after I got that call, and I was just auditioning—not auditioning, but I was just subbing for somebody. But he never came back. So I stayed in. And then uh, a few years ago, they wanted to change up the musicians in the band, and I became the drummer. They asked me if I want to play drums. I said, yes, I do. Thank you very much. So uh, I've been playing drums with the Beach Boys for almost four years now. But uh, I've been their percussionist also, as I was their piano player. I played all the percussion parts also. But when I, when I joined the Beach Boys and was their percussionist, uh, you know, I said, man, <laughs> I called Vader Sticks. I had a friend who said, man, you should get some, you know, drumsticks and, and, and what kind do you use? I said, I don't know, what's ever sitting on the stand? You know, I'm playing Timbali sticks, Tiffany sticks and stuff. <laughs> and he says, man, I, I got a friend at Vader. I said, give him a call. I said, can I get a signature stick? <laughs> he said, well, you can get your signature on a stick, but you can't have a signature stick. You're not big enough yet. <laughs> so, um, uh, that was probably 2000, 2001, I think 2000, I don't know, I'm not sure. And so now when I play with the Beach Boys, I have a timpani set up, so I use the, uh, the sizzle stick because it works, because I can flip it around really quick like that. After I'm done with the timpani, I need to get back to the cymbal, so I do that. And then uh, for lighter rooms, I like this Manhattan 7As. As you can see, uh, we got a close up there with our other camera, just kidding, but. <laughs> I love this, the 7 A's. You know, I was using 5 A's for a long time and, and power 5 B's for certain rooms. You know, whenever I felt strong and not as old as I am, um, I would use the heavier sticks and then I'd go back to the flash sticks, I call them. After you use 5 B's, you go to a 7 A. <laughs> when you're a drummer, you know what I'm talking about. But Dennis Dyken from the Smithereens said, man, I said, what do you use? You know, he's a big guy. He says, oh, I use, use 7 A's. I said, really? He says, yeah. And, uh, I love them, one of my favorite. They don't come in nude, but that's okay. I just rub them on the sidewalk before I use them and scrape off some of the varnish. My hero as drummers, Buddy Saltzman, played on all the four season records. He, uh, very famous session drummer. A lot of people, you say his name too. Um, he was the East Coast Hal Blaine, Buddy Saltzman. Actually, Dennis Dyken from the Smithereens and I did an article on him in Modern Drummer. and. Uh, Oh, it was kind of cool. He used a really light stick too, and he gave me a pair of his sticks, man. They were these Ro Mojo jazz sticks with like red print on it, and they were like bent and crooked. And he always played with the his backbeat with the stick backwards. 
And even though he was an accomplished jazz drummer when he played with the uh, traditional grip, he, in the studio when he played rock and roll, he played with the match grip. So I thought that was cool too. I will say that, you know, I think the, there was a TV show that was um, based on my family, the Cow Sills, and uh, it was called The Partridge Family. A lot of people don't know that. But um, I don't know which one I was. I think I was Susanna Croft in the, in the TV show, probably. Um, I definitely wasn't the drummer Brian Foster. He was too cute. Um, no, but actually, Screen Gems approached us to do this show. And uh, I think they already had Shirley Jones in mind, and they were looking for this other entity. And uh, so Screen Gems spent some time with us. I don't remember exactly how long. So we weren't cute anymore, you know, for them. They needed younger kids for that stuff, you know what I'm saying? So, and, and plus the fact they wanted Shirley Jones, my dad wanted my mom, who would not have wanted to do it. She, my mom didn't even want to be on stage. She was knock-kneed, you know, her whole time she's shaking on stage. And she was really cute. She had absolutely a beautiful voice, but she had no timing. And uh, she would start a song and she'd come in like, way off the mark and we were pros at turning the beat around to suit her needs and uh, but and she was she was just a housewife man she washed dishes and she sang around the sink and they put her in the band she never really wanted to be there but but so she definitely wouldn't have done the show and they didn't want her so they made the Partridge Family which was great I laughed my ass off at the show they let us see a preview of it I met David Cassidy once I was really I had just finished puberty again. You know, you know, my height of my success was in puberty. Thank you, God. That was great. Great. So I'm, I'm going to meet David, David Cassidy. There's a lady named Gloria Stavers. For you guys my age, you know that 16 Magazine and Tiger Beat, they had these teen magazine. So we were always in it. So I always get nervous when I meet somebody famous. I just do. Still to this day, you know, if like somebody famous, I, I feel like crying because I'm, I don't, I want them to be my best friend and I, I don't know how to make that happen and they're going to leave me. Anyway, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> so we get in her car to go to the Beverly Hills Hotel. She has to drop something off, take a picture of him. And like, I'm getting nervous as I'm approaching, you know, because I, I, I want to be cool. So, and, and I get there, and I get out of the car, she, he comes down, he's at the lobby, I see him, I go, oh my god, it's him, <laughs> you know, and I went up to him, uh, and I did the stupidest thing, I went, Mr. Cassidy, and I shook his hand, and that was it, that's all I had to say to the guy. <sighs> I'm actually involved with my, my companies that take care of me, Bader, I love you, you're the best. You guys are, man. And I like those blue, blue nylon brushes with the black handles on them. I don't know what they are. Like in between a brush and they got rubber bands and they go up there, what are they called? Monster brush. Those are my favorite thing. I've turned so many people onto those brushes. Cause you know, wire brushes are great and I'll play with those, but just sometimes they just sound so much better. You know, I'm an old dog. I play a four piece kit. I'd have more cymbals if I didn't have um, the timpani so I could hide. Um, I sit high in the seat, always have, Ringo sat high, I like that, so it's just how I say, I don't slouch, I sit up straight. When I joined the Beach Boys and became the drummer, um, when I first joined I was playing piano, they had these artist rendition versions of the Beach Boys songs, they sounded like the Beach Boys songs, but they weren't, they weren't the right arrangements. And some of the drum stuff wasn't the right stuff that was on the record, you know, and, and Carl was all good for the change and, you know, let's do Latin beat and don't worry, baby, it'll sound really cool. And uh, let's slow everything down to where it's, you know, to where I can sing it and get to my amplifier and get a drink of water. Um, so when I became the drummer, I just, uh, it was a great seat to have because I listen to all the records. I mean, I sit there, I just have the tracks only, and I would listen to Hal Blaine's drum parts. So basically I play most of the signature parts. You know, sometimes I'll get excited and towards the end of the show and throw some shit in, but I, I keep it pretty uh, pretty original, because that's what made it a hit. And I, I, I don't have a problem playing simple, I'm not a big technical drummer. If it doesn't, if I can't do it with the right hand, it won't get done. So, you know, this muscle is that big, and this one's just a back beater, you know. Um, I'm not a, 
I'm not a great reader. I can read, I learned later. Um, but playing the classic songs with the Beach Boys, you know, another classic again. We fixed all the vocal parts, so they're the original ones on the record. And it's a great catalog for me. I sit back there, I'm a big Beach Boy fan. I have the best seat in the house, is what it amounts to. And, uh, you know, I wish they were all alive and that they were all, you know, working together, but two are dead. Brian does his own thing, Al does his own thing. Um, there's a 50th anniversary coming up. I don't see them getting together, but I'm just a side guy in the circus. It's a great catalog, it goes endless. In fact, he does some cover tunes, and you know, a couple of us in the band say, why is he doing a cover song when they have like the catalog of doom? But, uh, but I guess I, I figured out that you know, that's his stuff. You know, if I played my own stuff, I'd want to do some of my my hero's music too in a show, I guess, you know. So he's into doo-wop. That's what he grew up singing for freshmen. So we do some of that stuff. Uh, some of it they record and some of it he just loves and it's his band. <laughs> People love it. People always come. The, the kids are singing the songs, the little grandkids. I, I laugh at that. I just say, this is amazing. It's an amazing machine. It just keeps going because they never stop touring. So, you know, they're talking about a 50th anniversary reunion tour and, and, you know, that's great in the big cities like New York, Chicago, things where they know who Brian Wilson is and they know, you know, the breakup. But most of the people in the United States don't know who they are personally. They just know the Beach Boys were in their town, you know, a week ago. Now, you know, what's this reunion thing? <laughs> so, but uh, I wish they would have one, even though I would, probably, I wonder who would be the band, Brian's band or our band. That's what we think about, their band and our band, because we're all friends. And uh, we say, God, if they did that, who are they taking? Who are they taking? <laughs> you know, I get dips on percussion. Well, I want to be the drummer, you know, so it's a funny bit. You know, even people who say, oh man, I can't believe you play with, you know, Beach Boy guys, man. It's not the real Beach Boys. And I just look at them and a couple of times I called them out. I said, dude, you're a drummer, right? He says, yeah. He said, what if they offered you the gig? Would you do it? I would just say, no man, I'm not playing with that, that's something cool, you know. It's like, would you take the gig? Would you? Huh? Would you? Would you take the gig? Yeah, you would. I put my kids through college. It's all good. And fortunately for me, I have a job doing what I love to do. And I'm playing with a band who's legendary, man. And it's a, it's a good gig. Best gig I ever had outside of my family gig. Guys, this has been bitching. You know what? Bader's been good to me. My life is good, drums are good, keep rocking. Talk to you later. John Kaus is signing off for Vader. Show it, show it, long as I can grow it by hair. I let it fly in the breeze and get caught in the trees.